Today I'm going to show you how you can make your own homemade natural deodorant with only three ingredients. But then you might be wondering, why make your own when you can just buy one in a store? If you're new to the channel, my name is Kalle and I live in this simple log cabin in the north of Sweden with my girlfriend Christina and our two Siberian Huskies, Tuss and Nala. When I first moved out here three years ago, I still bought all my products from the store. I hadn't even questioned that there were more options out there. But then I started looking at the labels of the products I was using and got both really frustrated and concerned. So before I show you the recipe, I need to tell you why it is so important that we pay attention to what we're putting in and on our bodies. All the small details matter. What fabric is your sweater made out of? What has your food been sprayed with before it arrived to the store? Make sure that you are subscribed and remember to hit like as well, because that helps this video to reach more people. Just so we set the right expectations for this video, I'm not some kind of fairy running around barefoot in the forest, collecting pine cones and moss. That's not me at all. These three ingredients is something most of you already have at home. The reason I'm gonna show you the deodorant recipe today is because that was the first one I learned myself. Because I started buying these homemade products uh, in the store first, but then I quite qu quickly realized that, okay, it's free ingredients. I might be able to do this myself. One thing I noticed when I started using these products was that I started to smell way less, even without the deodorant on me, because I realized it was because I removed all the toxins from the product that is usually in normal deodorants that you find in stores. So I have one simple rule when it comes to these kind of products and using these kind of ingredients, is that if I can't eat it, I shouldn't put it on my body. I'm guessing you probably already know this, but it's actually not the sweat that makes us smell. It's when the sweat actually comes in contact with the bacteria we already have on the skin. So why use a natural deodorant? Well, the body needs to sweat. That's the whole point. Like, we shouldn't block anything that is a perfectly normal function of the body. But if you look at commercials on the TV or YouTube or wherever, commercials about deodorants is like when they use sprays or creams or whatever, they say like, yeah, block out the smell for 14 hours. That's not a good thing. Like the body needs to sweat. That's the whole point. Okay, let's dive into the recipe. So what you need for this recipe is coconut oil or coconut fat, bicarbonate, or as we say in Swedish, bicarbonate, and then finally corn or potato starch. I've heard that some people are a bit sensitive to corn starch or potato starch, but they've used something called arrowroot. I've never used it myself, but that was apparently one solution to the problem if it gets like itchy using potato starch or corn starch. But I've never had any problem with it, and I've never heard any of my friends that had any trouble before, but when I googled a bit I found out that some people had some trouble with it, just, um, yeah, just so you know. And you of course also need something to put it in, which is a bowl, or we say bunke in Sweden, and a wooden spoon, or ladle. Slev, <laughs> we call it in Sweden. And then a measuring cup. Notice that nothing is in plastic. That's our one number one rule in this household. Nothing in plastic when it comes to food and what we're putting into our bodies. Metal or wood. That's it. So we're gonna start with the cornstarch. We have prepared over here, like a true TV chef. And that is half a deciliter. And for you non-metric people, I will put the recipe here on the screen as well, so you can follow along. So half a deciliter, that's about right. I'm not too like perfectionist when it comes to cooking this way. I'm very much a perfectionist perfectionist when it comes to filming and everything, but in this I don't really care. And then we have 20 milliliters of uh, bicarbonate, bicarbonate in Swedish, and that's one fifth of this one. Come on. Something like that. And before we put the coconut oil in, we stir. 
just mix it up a bit. And then the final ingredients, coconut oil. And we want half a deciliter of that as well. Some people melt this beforehand, but I think it's easier to get a good texture on the deodorant when not melting it actually. So I just prefer to do it as it comes. Yeah, I think that's half a deciliter ish. Then we pour this in here. And you're probably gonna feel in the beginning that it's you've used too little coconut oil, but just be patient and keep stirring. Okay, it's starting to give in. <laughs> it takes a while. Now we have the consistency I want at least. And it should feel like almost like a mousse, if that's the English word, I don't know. Uh, but it should be not too sticky and it should be quite easy to, to shape. And that is basically the whole recipe. But, but there's one or actually two or three things you can add if you want to. But this is the basic recipe that works perfectly well as a deodorant. But I threw, threw, throw, throw in a few more things to make it smell a bit better and to be even a bit more softer. So what I use is this. A few drops of avocado oil. Not too much, just a few drops. And again, it's not necessary to have this in. It's perfectly fine without it. But I just love the texture that it like, yeah, it keeps it together even more and it comes a bit smoother as well. And then to add a bit more scent to it, because now it's just basically smelling like coconut oil. And that's nothing wrong with that. It's kind of a neutral scent, but I want it to be a bit of a, yeah, scent to it, basically. So I have a few drops of pine tree and a few drops of lime. So it becomes like a, like a sweet forest scent, which I absolutely love. So I put this in now. A few drops of avocado. Like that. We will move over to the pine tree. This was completely baby proof. Ah. Mm. Three or four drops of that. And then move over to the lime. And then we stir again. Oh, it smells so good. Mm -mm -mm. Perfect. And now I just put it into a glass jar or a glass container. This is maybe not the easiest way to do it, but it works. Come back here. So this whole recipe that we did now became this much. It's a bit more left in the bowl, but one of these containers lasts me months. It's insane. And what you do to apply them, you just take a size of a pea, basically, and then you just rub it in your armpit. I usually wait a few minutes after I've applied it, before I put on like a sweater or something, because it is oils in it, so I don't want to leave any stains on it. It's never happened before, but just to be safe. So rub it in, let it dry a bit, and then sweater on. That was one recipe, but there are so much more that you can learn to do at home, like soaps, shampoos, oils, you name it. So Christine and me are going to go over six more recipes and natural products that we use ourselves here in the daily life in the cabin. Three focused on men and the other three focused on women. If you want to see that, you're going to want to get on Nebula. If you've missed it, Nebula is a streaming platform I have built with other creators like myself. And since we the creators actually own Nebula, we can be way more free and feel safe to publish longer format videos without getting punished by the YouTube algorithm. Nebula is completely free from ads and you also get early access to both my YouTube videos and my podcast episodes before anyone else. And now you're probably wondering, how do I sign up so I can get access to these six extra recipes for homemade products? Well, it's super easy actually. The best way to get Nebula is actually to sign up to CuriosityStream because we have teamed up with them so I can offer you guys a bundle. So when you sign up using my link in the description, you are getting both Nebula and CuriosityStream for only $15 for a whole year. That's 26% off the normal price. 
You're welcome. Curiosity Stream is the best place on the internet if you're like me and like to watch documentaries. They have thousands of high quality documentaries and one I would like to recommend is this one. Tiny House Living Off Grid. It's about the designer Graham Hill that converts a small shed in Hawaii into the ultimate eco-friendly tiny house. And besides that one, they have many others covering history, nature, science and technology. Now Christina and me are gonna continue making homemade products. So if you wanna join us, just click the link right up there and that will take you to where you need to go. See you guys over at Nebula. <laughs> it's like it would be boring if it was like this. I like help of your yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I could look so stupid.